our first webinar, What's New in 17.1 for our ASP.NET, MVC, and Bootstrap controls, presented by DevExpress Web Program Manager, Mahul Harry, and DevExpress Technical Evangelist, Don Wibier. FYI, this session is being recorded, and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Mahul and Don. Thank you, Amanda. Hey, good morning, Don. Hey, good morning, Mahul. So we've got a lot of great things to show in the 17.1 release. Uh, shall we dive in? Uh, sounds like a plan, man. All right, so with that, we've got very few slides because we've got a lot to show. But so sort of here's a quick agenda. And as usual, because we can't really, we've only got an hour to really dive into uh, and show a lot of these things. What we want to do is to tell you about these features, show them off a little bit in demos to get you excited about them, maybe what they're about, how they can be beneficial to you. So with that, let's start with the very first big announcement we have. In 2017, and I think we're the only company, Don, that's still making Web Forms controls. We have a whole new set of ASP.NET Web Form controls, and that's our new Bootstrap controls. Now, uh, if you remember, about a year ago, we announced our intention to do this. And the basic idea was, and I've written a blog post with all the past uh, uh, blog posts about where we announced it and then the preview, all that good stuff. But what I'm happy to say in 17.1, these are officially released. They are now available. And uh, what that means for you is a new set of bootstrap controls. And the advantage with these bootstrap controls is if you are using bootstrap, the front end framework, and all the themes that are available with it in the ecosystem and even the bootstrap uh, you know, minor controls like the editors and stuff, they work very well with our powerful controls like our grid view. Now, for this 17.1 release, we've done something special and that's to also in include a set of charting, which, uh, well, charting controls. And so what we did was we actually took our client site, Dev Extreme charts, and made them available. And so uh, these charts are based on SVG, so they have, they have nice animations and so forth. Now, this set of web form controls uh, is not as uh, vast. So our current ASP.NET web form controls includes 100 plus controls. Right now, in this library, there's things basically like the grid, the charts, navigation controls, and editors, things that we basically find most people want in a Bootstrap-enabled site. So a lot of times Bootstrap is used for a front client-facing website rather than just strictly, let's say, a CRUD uh, internal website for changing around forms over data. So the Bootstrap is very interesting. We're very excited about it, and we've done it in a way where we try to make the API as similar as possible to existing controls, and we've only added those features where we thought they would be most useful in a Bootstrap type of site. Now, we've also provided Visual Studio templates and some base themes, so let's just take a quick look at this. Now, if you have the 17.1 beta installed, then when you first finish installing, this demo center comes up. Now, typically, you've seen our technical demos, and for Bootstrap, you'll find a new icon. So, in a similar way, when we officially release 17.1, we'll have our devexpress.com website update as well. But when you click on this Bootstrap, it'll bring up the new Bootstrap demos. Now, the Bootstrap demos uh, for, uh, provide to you a way to see a lot of these cool demos. And they've got a nice landing page and all this and that. In fact, this site, of course, is built with Bootstrap and with all of our controls. And as you can see, we've put in all the major features that you likely care about. For, so for example, with the grid, you've got binding to large database. And so this works in a similar way that you uh, come to expect with our current ASP.NET grid view. And of course, powerful features like sorting, grouping, and of course, editing. Can't have a grid if you don't have those excellent editing features like batch editing, inline editing, and of course, the powerful editor's data validation that comes with DevExpress controls. And of course, as I mentioned, the charts are also very nice. Uh, it may be a little tough to see on this go to meeting, 
And that's why I recommend you download our beta and play with this yourself. But when you click around on these charts, you'll see there's some custom animations that pop up and so forth. Now, one thing that I highly recommend you play around with is if you click on this little gear icon here, we've taken a lot of the free demos, bootstrap themes, I should say, a lot of the free bootstrap themes that are available at bootswatch.com. And we've incorporated them into this demo. So this demo has a few options, like you can change the screen size. And we wanted to show you this so you can see, well, how does it look? Is it, you know, when we've got sort of, uh, is the grid responsive? Well, yes it is, but you know, I've talked about responsiveness with a grid and how you wanna make certain choices for how many columns you display and all that stuff. But more importantly, what it, what's nice is we give you this QR code so you can see what it feels like on a mobile tablet or a large phone. and also, you can take a look at the different themes. So for example, if I switch to Standstone here, what's happened is we are actually using the Bootstrap CSS file. And this is the main difference, because if you're familiar with the ASP.NET Web Form Controls from DevExpress, uh, I call them classic. We don't, they're still going to be around. I just call them classic because they've been around longer. But those controls use the ASP.NET theming engine. And so for Bootstrap, we're using completely uh, the Bootstrap theming engine where we pick up on a Bootstrap uh, CSS themes for uh, uh, the colors, for the grid, for the charts, and all that. And you can see how beautiful our grid adapts and all of the Bootstrap controls will adapt the same way. And again, take a look at our demos. And if you want to learn more, I will be, we will be updating the site. But what's great is they're officially released and you can play with them now, you can use them now, and because they're web form controls, they will be in your Visual Studio toolbox. You can use the designer to drag and drop them onto a form and get started today. So, uh, I'll mention one last thing about them, and uh, we've gotten your feedback, and uh, a lot of people requested MVC versions of these controls, and I'm happy to say we are going to work on that for a future major release, so uh, keep an eye out for that. So, Don, I understand we also have some other new controls for ASP.NET. Yeah, absolutely, Merle. Um, and that is the hint control. In this release, we have included a new hint control. And for all of you who think, yeah, but we already have a pop-up control and we can use that to be a hint control as well. I can tell, well, the hint control is even more lightweight as the pop-up control because it serves only one purpose, which is hinting. And, well, this means that it is lacking some more advanced features found in the pop-up control, uh, but it improves your page rendering speed, especially if you have a lot of hints to do. Now, let's take a look at the features demo of the hint control. Um, it does include some really nice details, like the little arrow pointing to the UI element. Um, it has animation effects, and customizable delay before displaying, customizable size, and obviously on-demand loading of its content. And uh, well, another nice uh, another nice feature where this really blends in is uh, something you can see with the hint for the grid cells demo for instance um, as you can see in the demo um, the grid view truncates some text if it's too long or in this case it's got the more info link uh, on this particular column and when you click the link it will show a hint control to um, to display the additional information here so it can be used really nice with the uh, grid view as well Um, yeah, and that's that's just a small but new control, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you can use your uh, that you can benefit that you can make it uh, work in your application. Awesome. So we've also updated the venerable grid view control. Now it's probably no surprise this is our most popular ASP.NET control because a, a, a grid is uh, very useful. It's got a lot of great features built into it, and we are constantly constantly trying to think of great ways to make it fast and light and also uh, because it's such a great UI paradigm to show 
for the data, uh, we're also looking to improve its UI features. And for this release, that's what we focused on. We focused on making a new toolbar. So we've incorporated a new toolbar that is part of the grid view. Now, what this means is previously, if you wanted something kind of like this, this functionality, well, so let's, let's basically discuss a toolbar. A toolbar is nice because it saves you space inside of, uh, let's say, the grid for this uh, example here, rather than putting a new button column or a command column that has new edit, delete, and so forth, or export at the top, or a filter button under the column header name, we can put all that under the toolbar. And so, for example, now it becomes contextual. So, for example, if I come here or here, I can do certain actions based on the cell. But more importantly, I can have a set of uh, commands at the very top that will allow me to control what's happening in the grid. And as I said, previously, to get this kind of toolbar functionality, you had to make it separate from the grid. So it was external to the grid. Well, I'm happy to say now it's part of the grid, which is great because you get a st uh, the ability to create standard toolbar items like export and refresh and all that kind of stuff, or you can make custom toolbar items with custom actions. So for example, if I put a custom button that says, hey, you know, uh, I want to save some particular item back to the database on the server or send a message to uh, another uh, control on this page, you can do that. And so, for example, this toolbar makes it really nice. And best of all, because it's part of the grid, any themes that you apply will also apply directly to the grid because it reuses, of course, our existing controls like our editor buttons and all of that. Now, the other big feature that we've done is we've also improved the ability for your end users to customize the grid on a mobile device. Now, to see this, uh, let me first highlight a, a sort of a challenge uh, customers may have when they're working on a mobile device. So previously, we've called something like this a customization window. I think we're going to rename this to column chooser or something because that's all it really is. But basically, what it does on the desktop, let's say I want to change around which columns are in the grid. So when I display this column window, column chooser window, you can see I got a list of columns and I can bring out certain columns or I can put them back in. And that's great when I have a mouse. Because you can see this is really geared towards sort of a mouse friendly UI. But what about when I'm on a mobile? This doesn't work so well on a mobile. So for mobile, what we've decided is to create for you what we call the customization dialog. So here, for example, I've got the grid on a tablet device, and I can display a customization dialog window button that when uh, touched will bring up a modal dialog. As you can see, this is very much geared towards uh, a touch UI. So they've got larger touch targets. Now, not only can I uh, decide what columns go in here, with the column chooser functionality, but I can also decide the sorting order, whether it's ascending, descending, whether uh, I'm using, uh, I'm doing grouping by any certain amount of fields or filtering by any amount of fields. And so it's a very nice, easy way to decide. So for example, I can choose category name as descending, and then I can even choose when to apply that. And as soon as I do, you can see that our change is applied immediately. And so once again, you can, you can test this on your local machine, I mean, on your local tablet or phablet, whichever device you choose. It's a very nice feature that'll make your end user's life on a mobile tablet much easier. All right, Don, what's happening with the charts? Yeah, well, we've introduced um, a couple of things here as well. Um, as you might remember, some releases back, we have introduced a runtime client-side chart designer, which allows your end user to customize certain aspects of the chart being displayed. Like you could hide out labels, stuff like that, or you could change labels. Um, in this release, we have added the ability to configure secondary accesses and additional chart panes. Um, we've also implemented the ability to specify a summary or aggregate function on one of the series axes. Um, and that is something that you can see in the screenshot, um, and you can you can change that. Your end user can change that basically. 
another really nice addition uh, is something that we can show in the in the following demo is uh, the ability to include checkboxes in the legend which allow you to toggle the series visibility so for instance we have like uh, the goods sales by year um, and I bet you do want to know what we did on ice cream and I don't want to know what we did on ice cream so you can just check that box and the series are gone if you pick the green, if you, if I would click the green one, I don't know what's going on with the ice cream. And this is something that you can, yeah, use your end user can use to quickly filter the information that uh, he or she wants to see. Don, ice cream is very important. I have to know how ice cream is doing. So I think this is fantastic. We, we can get these trends. We got these little uh, hints over. And I, and I really like this. From the checkboxes, you can control exactly uh, these uh, chart displaying uh, updates. Exactly. Awesome. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the scheduler. And in the ASP.NET scheduler, it's gotten a lot of love. Now, if you've been following along with every release, which I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, ever since early last year, we made an intention that said, listen, you know what? We're going to make our scheduler like one of the best HP.NET schedulers out there. So we've done a lot of work for performance, for rendering on the client side certain things. So we updated appointments to so they pop up a lot faster and so forth. And uh, there were still some big missing pieces in our scheduler, though. So, for example, one of the things was we didn't have an agenda view. Now, it, it's uh, I'm happy to say in this release, 17.1, there's an agenda view available. And not only is it available it's beautiful we based it off of the popular web calendars out there like outlooks uh, outlook.com or google calendar and you can see it's got a beautiful look and so the agenda view saves you time by only showing you your upcoming appointments and here we can show the agenda view is showing you not just uh, your appointments but also by resource so it's very customizable and it's very uh, slick and it's got a beautiful beautiful look to it now we've uh, we've also updated the timeline view and so the timeline view now provides you a way so that uh, before when you wanted to scroll over to the right you had to use these little buttons and it would jump now the scroll bar allows you to see exactly all of those items it makes life a lot easier and we've also updated uh, vertical scrolling. So we've provided a way so that when you scroll now, that the top bar will be fixed as you scroll down. Now, these are built in to the current release. And uh, one final thing I should mention is we've also improved keyboard support on the scheduler as well. We provided a set of actions. So if your end users do a lot of things with a keyboard and they're constantly using this uh, uh, scheduler to make appointments, check appointments, they'll be very happy to know common commands like moving around with the arrow keys or tab or enter or delete, they will work now in the scheduler. And finally, we've added a couple of, based on your feedback, we've improved some APIs uh, for knowing when a cell was clicked or double clicked or getting the visible appointments. So all that is uh, in the documentation, which you can start playing around with today. Now, uh, we still have more plans for the scheduler, so you'll have to stay tuned, but I'm very happy to say the scheduler is doing uh, great with leaps and bounds improvements. All right, Don, what's happening in the editors arena? Well, let's start with the, the simple editors like uh, the text box, uh, the drop down box, etc. And basically, all editors that include the note text support. We have added a really small but nice feature here. Um, and that is um, in the previous release, if you would have a note text specified and you would focus uh, on one of those editors, then the note text will disappear, what you can see on the screen right now. But with the, the 70.1 release, uh, the note text stays if you focus. So now we are focusing on the name, for instance, and it will still be there unless you start typing something in there. So it's just a little UI 
feature that will help your end users know what they were typing in that box. Agreed. I, I like that because look, I just clicked in here and I'm like, what do I type? Uh, see, now I don't know. But uh, no, but all kidding aside, I do really like the small little UI features like this because, you know, uh, the details like this kind of help the end users figure out. And, and then you can do some unique things with your forms. For example, if you don't want to label or something like that, I've seen that sometimes in forms. It's really up to you. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I think talking about editors, uh, there is another editor that we did a bit of work on, which is the uh, HTML editor. With the uh, 17.1 release of the HTML editor, we have added a specific feature for the MVC extension. So this is one thing which is only applicable for MVC development. Uh, it is, the, it, it is the ability to define a custom model binder class to provide custom validation. I don't want to go too much into detail here, and we might do a webinar on this kind of specific MVC uh, material. But basically, uh, what I can say is you can now create your own model binder, which allows you to um, have your custom validation logic in one place and it's spe specifically useful if you have like uh, this editor used in all kinds of views inside your project um, and what you can see in the demo here we have like a simple validation here that, that will limit to 50 characters and in the code below uh, you can see how you can do that custom validation by creating that validation demo binder well, as I mentioned, I don't want to go too much into detail here, but it'll give you an impression on uh, how you can do your own validation. So, um, and for both web forms and MVC, um, we have extended our client-side API with a set of new methods, events, and extended arguments to help you deal with HTML editor dialogues. You might be aware of the fact that we have like a whole bunch of really nice pop-up dialects already inside the HTML editor, but um, yeah, sometimes you do want to customize it slightly or you don't want to do, redo the whole dialect, but just like a small behavior you want to change. Um, and that is possible now with the new API. It should make it more easy to customize them. And I think the last thing which is worth mentioning is um, with the HTML editor, you could already paste formatted text from an MS Word document as well as other applications uh, where the formatting was cleaned client side. And well, this works pretty good, but in some scenarios you might be aware of the fact that Word produces some really, really great HTML. Um, sometimes the client side cleaning functionality isn't good enough so now we have added just one property which will process this cleaning on the server so we'll have C sharp and we can use a whole bunch of more algorithms to clean up that HTML before it's pasted into the documents awesome yeah and so really I mean these the HTML editor has gotten some features for you the developers Right, so we've improved the API, Absolutely. the RTF processing, and all that good stuff. And as Don mentioned, uh, maybe he'll do another webinar, uh, MVC webinar, on some of those features coming up. Just let us know if you're interested. All right, Don, let me show you. We've done some improvements to our pivot grid control. Now, specifically, the pivot grid control, when you're using the in-memory data processing, it has significantly improved on some common operations like data shaping, for example, sorting or filtering. And it's much as, uh, like for example, in 16.2, it took uh, 9,800 milliseconds, we've got it down to 1,400. And so you can see that's huge uh, uh, difference that you're gonna notice. Now, you might say, well, what does it mean in memory data processing? Well, this is when you're not using, for example, the server side uh, features and what we call uh, large database support. But basically, if you're just binding the pivot grid to get uh, and process the data uh, within the grid and not letting the database do the work. And so if none of that made sense to you, no worries, contact me after the, the webinar. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a couple of demos, but you'll be happy to know that 
if the grid has improved, you're gonna get an improvement just by upgrading to 17.1 with the pivot grid. All right, Don, what's going on with our rich editor control, our, one of our powerful Microsoft Office style controls? Yeah, well, we introduced the rich editor not too long ago. I mean, it's been a couple of releases and uh, with every release, we have been adding more features like uh, support for headers and footers, uh, tables, and, and it, it at this stage is a pretty feature complete rich editor basically. The, but again, we weren't done yet. So with this release, we have added support for, for floating objects. And as you can see in the demo here, we'll have uh, Mr. Shakespeare on the right side of the document and we can now drag it around and put it somewhere else. And this is obviously one of the things which comes in quite handy when you're doing word, word processing. Um, and with this feature, we have also introduced a new dialogue which is shipped into the rich edit control. And that is obviously a dialogue which is quite inspired by words to position and to uh, specify the text wrapping um, for this object. So you can say the text needs to be in front or behind or etc. Well, all the options are here. So uh, this is this is quite a, um, a nice feature that has been added to the rich editor. And um, the other thing that we have been adding is a couple of smaller but useful mail merging enhancements. And uh, with that, um, it is now possible to specify, uh, to create a field which is in a, inside a submenu. So you can actually specify, I want to insert a date field or a time field, et cetera, et cetera. Um, which makes it easy to uh, to deal with those kind of fields because you can actually check what kind of field it is and you can uh, code it in. So it's just a small but useful one. And um, what we furthermore did is we have inserted uh, the possibility to uh, to search through your uh, merge fields. So when you have like a lot of merge fields, uh, you can now actually search for them. We have created a, a nice little search box here, uh, which allows you to search through all those fields. Awesome. So that uh, brings us to some changes to the themes. Now, we've got a new theme. It's a material theme, and uh, specifically the material compact theme. Now, for this, Don, I'm going to go to, I'm going to give some love to Microsoft here, and we're going to go to the Edge browser. Which is fantastic, by the way. You know. Yeah, you should. It is a great browser. It is. I, I do use it daily. Uh, not as much as Chrome, but I use it. But uh, what we've done is we had this theme. And you've probably talk, uh, heard us talk about our newer themes. And if, and if you don't know, I'll just do a quick recap. It's that we've been introducing a lot of new modern ASP.NET themes for the existing ASP.NET controls from DevExpress. And so these newer themes are really nice because they can be styled. You can customize their fonts as well as the base color. So, uh, and it's all in the theme builder. And again, if you have questions about that, let us know. We'll send you all the good links. But basically, we introduced a material theme. Now, material is based on Google's material design. And that design language is it's beautiful. It's very nice. They use it on, on a lot of their devices, not just the phones. And... What's nice about it is it's got some nice animations uh, when you click on things, but also when you move over and some base colors. Um, now, when we first introduced this, this was a very nice theme and people said, I like it. I like the fonts, I like the colors, I like the way things are sort of, got that sort of nice softness to them or roundedness, whatever. So people said, but the problem is it's really designed more for mobile devices. And this is true, because you can see the large paddings here. And I said, on desktop, I don't want to waste so much space. So in 17.1, we've got the material compact theme, which is essentially the material theme, but in a compact, which is better for the desktop, because as you can see, the paddings are a lot smaller as compared to the material theme. Now, 
And also, you can see that we've got this new theme settings in our demos that kind of let you play around with the sort of the base color. So if you don't like, for example, the orange and you rather have, let's say, this purple, you can switch over to that and it, the base color will change as well. And you can even try, for example, a different base font. For example, here, I've got uh, I'm uh, Madurai, or, and you can switch to Roboto Regular, which is, uh, I think, Don's gamer tag. Right, Don? Absolutely. So it's, it's got some really nice features you can play around with. I am a huge fan of this uh, material theme for many reasons, because, for example, as you can see, as I click around, it just looks nice. And uh, again, I'm showing off just the, the ribbon uh, control here because again, the ribbon control is beautiful, but it kind of shows off a lot of the fonts, a lot of the icons and so forth. But definitely play around uh, with this in the beta. Now, what's happening with our other major office control, Don, the venerable spreadsheet control? Yeah, the spreadsheet control is another piece of work which is really, really awesome. And uh, with every release, I also learn like more features that are available in Excel that I didn't know of. But uh, anyway, with this release, we have added support for uh, comments. So now you can actually annotate your uh, cells or your, your sheets. Uh, so other users can see what you have been doing there and well you can obviously hide them delete them change them by just going to the cell and you see that the cell is being marked with this little uh, triangle on the right upper corner um, and yeah you can just uh, put comments wherever you like so if you would select this, yeah, you can just click it, you can change it, or you can move it around, and it will be connected still to that particular cell. So this is basically just uh, something that most Excel users are already used to. So uh, yeah, really, really nice add-on. Another thing that we have uh, done is that we are now able to give you the possibility to customize the uh, context menu. So normally if you right click one of those cells you'll get like a predefined menu which holds items like insert, delete, remove, disable, etc. <coughs> but now you're able to uh, to add some of your own items here um, and they will be identified um, with the worksheet elements, so for instance a cell or a row, so we'll, we'll check for you if you had selected a row and then you can deal with that with that item in a different way as if it was only a cell etc. So yeah, this, this allows you to, uh, to add some extra functionality on the context menu. And well, another feature that we did get some questions about um, and this is particularly useful in a scenario where you embed like the Excel functionality as a small portion of your application. Uh, that is the ability to uh, specify a worksheet display area. And what that basically means is you can specify the maximum amount of rows and columns in this document. Um, you also see that when you specify it, then the scroll bars will get much smaller on the, the bottom and, uh, and the side. Um, and you can just specify it by uh, calling the method worksheet display area. So this is useful for predefined worksheets um, where you want to reduce the amount of, of, of cells, basically. I, I, yeah, I really like this feature. In fact, I use it quite a bit in Excel because as you can know, in Excel, you can uh, just infinitely scroll down to the left or the right. And, uh, and this is a very nice way to have a clean uh, layout. Some people really like limiting those rows. And of course, if you've got a spreadsheet already that, or XLS file that you're opening in our ASP Expression Control, we'll honor that as well. Obviously. Real yeah, same with the annotations, by the way. I mean, that, that just works with Excel documents as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so 
Um, now, I want to mention that uh, we're going to be answering some questions at the end, so don't worry. We'll come back and answer a lot of good questions. But uh, with that, let's talk about, Don, the a new set of MVC controls that we're releasing in 17.1. And again, this is crazy, right? Because in, in this 17.1 release, we're re releasing a new set of bootstrap controls, a new set of MVC controls, uh, and, and it's I think it's a win-win for our customers. So what do we have in store for you is a new set of controls called the DevExtreme ASP.NET MVC controls. And what these provide is a way for you to have a new set of MVC controls. Now, why did we do this? So we have the existing MVC controls, which if you go to devexpress.com and if you take a look, at products, you'll see that we've got these MVC controls. And it's 50 plus ex extensions and so forth. These are actually based a lot heavily on the classic web form controls that we are, make available. They're powerful, a lot of people love them. However, some people asked us, they said, listen, we really like your client side controls from DevExtreme. And so if you're not familiar, DevExtreme is our suite for the JavaScript components that work in Angular, J with jQuery, with um, all sorts of great integrations. And uh, they provide a lot of unique features. But again, they're client side. So they're based on JavaScript. So a lot of times uh, ASP.NET developers are, uh, they prefer to have them uh, work with ASP.NET. And so a lot of customers asked us, they said, listen, we'd like what DevExtreme has to offer and we like sort of that approach we would like these in MVC. And so that's what we've done. We incorporate them as MVC extensions. So they are now native MVC extensions. So what this means is by turning them into native MVC extensions, and essentially what we've done is what we created wrappers. And so the, they wrap the client side functionality. And so now you can use them with Razor code syntax and MVC. And also they provide seamless data binding in MVC, as well as all the other great uh, features that you normally uh, get with MVC. And so for this release, we've created 200 plus demos. Now, we've had Visual Studio integration, which means you, th there's a file new way to get started. But what's great is that using this approach, not only do we support ASP.NET MVC uh, from version three and up, but we're also supporting ASP.NET Core. Now, if you haven't seen, uh, if you've not uh, seen the previous webinars, we've covered a couple of these webinars and we'll, we'll cover them more in a future webinar as well. But uh, you can get started with ASP.NET Core today. Now, what's nice about that is ASP.NET Core uh, is cross-platform, which means that uh, it can run on Linux, uh, Mac, and so forth. And what's interesting about that story is that uh, it's not easy for us to provide our classic controls because they have some uh, real good features that hook into Windows exporting for fonts and all that kind of good stuff, which is where these controls, the DevExtreme MVC controls, make perfect sense. Because they're based on JavaScript, they can run anywhere. So these are now fully released with demos. Now, by the way, I, I know I keep saying release and a lot of you are going, wait, wait, I don't see it on the website. I promise you. I'll address that in just a minute. But what I want to mention is they are part of the 17.1 release. And you'll be happy to know that you subscribers of ASP.NET and DXperience, a universal, you get these included as part of your subscription. So uh, again, even though it's a, it's a, even though it's a new set of controls, they're fully available to you. And you now have a choice between classic MVC and DevExtreme, uh, DevExtreme MVC controls as part of your suite. So, and I and I want to mention one last thing is that we, if, if you've been following along with this release, if you've been playing around with the betas and stuff, uh, you'll be happy to know that we also added a major feature, which is the editor for helpers. And uh, again, Don will probably do a webinar in the future to talk about these kind of things. But in essence, this is a way to say, listen, next time I need a text box, use the DevExtreme MVC text box rather than the regular text box. And then it gives you some other features, for example, validations and so forth. So all of this is part of 17.1, which uh, brings me to one of our last slides. When is it available? 
And the short answer, when I say soon, it's soon. It's likely very soon. Uh, we're just crossing the, the final T's and dotting the dots and all the I's and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Julian's on this webinar, so you can hold him accountable and try to get a data out of him. But I promise you, it's actually very soon. We got a webinar every day this week. And uh, as soon as it's available, we'll tell you with uh, that. Okay. Uh, with that done, do you have any closing thoughts? Well, I mean, this is just a really, really good release. I mean, we've got the bootstrap controls. We've got the Demex Stream MVC controls. I mean, and we've got a whole bunch of new features on the existing controls. So, I mean, we have done so much. I mean, the teams have done so much work. It's... Uh, yeah, it's really exciting using all of these, uh, yeah, really I'm, good stuff. Uh, I completely agree with you. The uh, The story for web developers is improving every day. Um, ASP.NET is, uh, you know, I was just at the build conference last week. They've got all sorts of great announcements about uh, ASP.NET. Of course, they talk a lot about core. There was even some updates to web forms that they discussed as well. But what's what I'm really happy to know is, you know, I, I think, Again, I don't know of any other company making new web forms controls. So as you can see, DevExpress still cares about providing value to our existing customers. And I think uh, if you are using Bootstrap, you'll find that this is a so such a great uh, uh, set of offering for you. And if you're doing a lot with MVC, you'll be really interested to check out the new MVC controls. All right, with that, let's hand it back to Amanda. Hey guys, thank you. Some exciting stuff coming up for ASP.NET, MVC, and Bootstrap. All right, so Wamahu and Don are going to take a quick look at the questions. I'm just going to go over what's coming up this week for our uh, rest of our launch week webinar. So tomorrow, May 16th, is new in 17.1 WinForms and WPF. Uh, join Paul Usher and CTO Julian Bucknell as they explore the newest desktop components and features set to ship as, 17, as part of 17.1. And then Wednesday is new in Code Rush. Get a peek inside Code Rush for Roslyn. And then Thursday, new in Dev Extreme. Join our CTO Julian Bucknell and Mahul will be back for an in-depth review of upcoming HTML5 and JavaScript products. And finally, Friday, New in 17.1 dashboards, reporting, and analytics with uh, Julian Bucknell and Paul Usher. They're going to learn how we're reshaping our data analytics product line and how you can deliver more in less time with 17.1. Thanks, Amanda. If sure. Let's just take a quick minute since we have uh, some time left over here to talk about some of these questions, some great questions, first of all. Now, um, I will say some of you have some really good questions, specific questions about features. I would recommend that you uh, post them to support. And of course, we're answering them here. But what's nice is that and when you post them to support, you'll get, uh, if there's an example available, they'll, they'll link you to that. So definitely, you know, uh, if you've got a very specific question like, how can I take XYZ feature and make it do that, then definitely post that. Now, I will address some questions, and some of them have been answered already, but for example, some one of the most basic ones is, can I import a Word file into our rich text editor? Now, if you don't know, our rich text editor is essentially just that. It's a full-on rich text editor. It's meant for you to get Office-like functionality. And maybe it's not always obvious, but in essence, if you were ever sitting there going, hey man, I really need to take Microsoft Word and incorporate it into my ASP.NET project, well, that's what we, this is, it's Word inspired, as we say, Microsoft Word inspired control. So it does the most basic things like import in Word files and formats like docx, rtf, all that stuff, as well as export to a lot of those formats as well. And as you can see, it's got the powerful ribbon UI metaphor that is inspired by Word as well in Office. And uh, we've been adding all those features and it supports things like mail merging and uh, you know you can change around toolbars. It's got a powerful API. So it goes way beyond because you can't just take Word and embed it into your HP.NET site, which is where this powerful uh, rich text editor comes in. 
And again, it's it's different than our HTML editor, which is really meant to edit HTML. This is rich text uh, formatting and editing, which is much more difficult and also powerful. So uh, I kind of wanted to address that. Now, somebody asked about uh, the yeah, Mahu, I, I see sorry. one of the questions here. Maybe you can give an answer on that. The, uh, the MVC wrappers are compatible with Bootstrap 3, 4, and with Angular 2 slash 4. Maybe yeah. you can give an answer on that. Yeah, absolutely. So great question. They are compatible with Bootstrap 3. Uh, Bootstrap 4 uh, we're working on, and that's because uh, I don't know if they've officially released Bootstrap 4 yet anyways, but uh, yeah, with Bootstrap 3. As far as Angular 2, the answer is yes, but again, they're MVC, they're server-side MVC controls, right? So if you're going, if you're looking to use Angular, what you want to do is you want to go to uh, the DevExtreme suite. So if you take a look at, for example, DevExtreme, if you click on any of the widgets and click, uh, actually go, just go to js.devexpress.com, click on demos, and then click on, for example, any of these demos here. What you'll find is we've got code for not just things like jQuery and Knockout, but you'll see that we've got Angular 1, which now is known as AngularJS, and the current Angular. And I say the current Angular because right now it's Angular 2, but uh, very soon it's going to be Angular 4. So again, we'll talk about this in Thursday's webinar, but uh, Thursday's webinar for Dev Extreme. But in essence, yeah, uh, we are going to be supporting Angular 4 and 17.1 for Dev Extreme, which means the short answer is yes. So Bootstrap is a front-end framework. Mostly people care about its theming. And if you don't know, uh, Dev Extreme supports Bootstrap a little bit differently, but you can just you know upload Bootstrap styles and all that. So we can talk more about that specific question about DevExtreme, I think, on uh, Wednesday. But the short answer is yes, we support Bootstrap 3, uh, and we'll look at uh, 4 as we get closer to release. Uh, okay, Michael has a I good question, hang on one second, about Bootstrap over the web forms controls. And what that means, Michael, is Bootstrap is a front-end framework that was started by, it was originally started by Twitter, but it quickly became, uh, something of its own uh, uh, thing, but it's very popular because it allows, it, it, it's a front-end framework for layout, right? And also theming. But the layout part means that it has a certain way that it does uh, uh, sort of, for example, you can define uh, grids, for example, and what I mean by grids, grids are different. When we, what they mean by grid is they use a grid layout system. Now, this webinar is too short to discuss it, but I promise you there's a webinar I'm planning to talk specifically about Bootstrap and our Bootstrap controls. But we wanted to support Bootstrap because Microsoft a few years ago basically took Bootstrap. And so when you go file new with a Microsoft ASP.NET project template for MVC or web forms, they are using Bootstrap because Microsoft said, well, we don't want to have to rewrite that. Let's just use Bootstrap. So they adopted Bootstrap. But uh, in doing so, uh, you know, uh, they made it difficult, for example, because they themselves went away from the ASP.NET theming that they had invented and said, they said, look, you know what? Bootstrap should be popular. There's an entire ecosystem of themes that are available for Bootstrap. You can buy pro themes. You can get, use uh, free themes. And so, uh, you can take it. You can explore that. If you just Google Bootstrap themes, you'll find a ton of stuff out there. Again, I'll talk more about that in a future webinar. Just keep an eye on our newsletters, and we will discuss that. Um, so let me. So somebody, Peter, you asked about the React grid. Join us Thursday. I will talk about our React support Thursday. But wow, I gotta say, guys, I'm super happy that you know, in the even with the ASP.NET, everybody's looking to say, okay, how do we best uh, you know, deliver the best experience for our users. And sometimes it's server side, sometimes it's client side. I think we're really Yeah, I think seeing... Bahu, yeah. Sh um, I saw I saw a couple of questions. I think that, that I can re uh, that I, that I can answer them like in uh, yeah, please go in, ahead. In one answer. So I see for instance here where was it again? Um, 
there was a question about like yeah what what should we do should we go for uh if we want to go for an mvc application do we need to go for dev extreme or do, do we need to go for uh our, our mvc uh, controls that we already had um it was already answered by support like please take up uh with our support desk but i think it might be interesting for for quite a bunch of uh of, of people here because things are getting a bit weird for people who are like they're hearing all kinds of different technologies here so i think that we can recap that like if you want to go for dotnet core there is no other choice than to use dev extreme because dev extreme uh, basically is server agnostic and with the other dev uh, with the other dev express mvc extensions that we have which are based up on web forms we are using apis like gdi rendering for reporting and images and so on and those apis are still not available on dotnet core so it would be really wise to to check what the specifications of your application will be and to see if you can use dev extreme for that or if you need to go for dev express mvc extensions because the dev express mvc extensions they are they yeah at this stage they still have a bit more options and features as dev extreme though the, the dev extreme team is catching up with them really quickly uh, but that that's probably the most important thing here. So check the specification and if you don't know what to go You can always ask our support desk or you can drop me an email like what what should we do? For instance, we don't have a rich editor for dev extreme yet. So if you are definitely Gonna use the rich editor in some form or shape. Yeah, you'll probably need to go for the MVC extensions um, And yeah talking about like Angular again and um, uh, Bootstrap. Well, Angular is basically a framework, a client-side framework, which will keep track of your application state all on the client. And Bootstrap is for layouting your controls. And the Bootstrap controls that we are now introducing, they basically render. What we've done is we have taken the existing controls and we have changed the rendering engine. So basically that means that the HTML which is being produced is according to the bootstrap um, HTML and the CSS classes and so on. Um, and that means that it, is boots, that it is true bootstrap. And as far as I know, we're pretty much the only one who have that for web forms right now. And we'll have it for MVC as well, but they will be rendered differently as the as the existing dev express controls so i think this i hope this is clear for for the people who are asking about what we need to do do we need to go for dev extreme or bootstrap or mvc or whatever because yeah those technologies are slightly different from each other but uh yeah i hope that that this makes a bit of sense for uh for the people who are asking this so yeah let me let me add on to that i mean our what DevExpress does is we provide you uh, really sort of the UI with whatever platform you choose. And so our goal for the web story with DevExpress is to try and address uh, all the different places. Now, for ASP.NET Core, currently there is only one option, which is these DevExtreme MVC controls. And if you want to see, I've done a webinar on it, and don't worry if you can't find this, just uh, you know, ping me on Twitter and I'll show you, uh, I'll send you these links and all that kind of good stuff. But in this webinar, we, we, wa we did a walkthrough from file new to how to update events, all that kind of good stuff. And, um, but the, the first question you should ask yourself is, okay, which, which platform do I want to choose? Is it web forms or MVC? Is it full framework or .NET Core? Or is it completely client side? If I go completely client side, do I want to go Angular? Or do I want to go, uh, you know, just jQuery? So you have a lot of options and decisions. And I would suggest that, you know, you, you really explore because there are some benefits. You know, some people are in the uh, React camp. Some people are in the Angular camp. Uh, some people uh, really like .NET Core. And again, like I said, we only have one option for .NET Core. And as, you know, Don mentioned, it's because .NET Core is a new framework that's still being developed. Uh, and if you're familiar at all with the framework .NET, uh, the, you know one of the key ones that we use is something called System.Drawing, 
And that's still not available in .NET. I think they're trying to figure out a way to get that, but until that story improves, then we can't do certain things like, uh, you know, uh, what we rely on with our, our export engine. So all the AS current ASP.NET controls, the classic ones, they use the same export engine that all the other .NET controls use. And that's a advantage that we can provide you. And, you know, we can't port certain things over. We can't port certain uh, controls over until that story gets better. But that's besides the point. What's nice is you have the option now for ASP.NET Core, and you have a couple options for standard MVC. All right, now with that, somebody asked about Visual Studio on Mac. I think that was just announced last week. Let us let us figure out what that thing is and how best to make sense for it. But likely, uh, like Visual Studio Code, you know, uh, the dev extreme works great in Visual Studio Code. I use Visual Studio Code a lot. You've seen me use it in previous webinars. Uh, but if you're doing things, let's say, with ASP.NET, I still prefer full-on Visual Studio Professional or higher. All right, then somebody said, is there an easy migration from Web Forms to Bootstrap? Great question, Steve. Uh, the answer is no. And that's because this the Bootstrap controls is a new set of controls. This is not based on, uh, sort of the rendering is similar, some of the API calls are similar, but as you can see that this is a new control altogether. This is not ASPS grid view, this is bootstrap grid view. And you can see it's got uh, similar things where you've got the columns collection and it's got a field name property. But unfortunately, if we tried, it would be messy. And the reason is, as I mentioned, not every feature is the same. We made certain decisions that said, well, that feature doesn't make sense in bootstrap grid view. Maybe we don't put it in. So for that reason, this grid view in some ways can be considered a little lighter, but only because it is uh, also you can consider maybe not as powerful. We put in all the necessary features that we thought make sense in a bootstrap uh, type of website, maybe for front end or something like that. But, you know, as we go forward, we will add more controls, more features as they make sense for bootstrap. Uh, the current plans is to work on an MVC version for a future release. And uh, somebody asked, Robert asked about the chart control. Is it responsive? The chart control that is included with the bootstrap, uh, yes, that is responsive. And you can play around with those and check out this demo to learn more. So for example, when we go there, you can see because these are based on SVG, they uh, adapt quite well to uh, different styles and different form factors. Um, Okay, any other interesting questions? Let's see, any printing improvements you can call out? Um, not at this moment. I would, I would save that question for uh, the webinar on WinForms and uh, they may get into that. All right, and I think, okay, are BoostNet controls available in .NET Core? Joe, you asked the million dollar question. Uh, well, since you asked, the answer is no, not yet. Again, if you're not familiar with ASP.NET Core, there is no ASP.NET Web Forms in ASP.NET Core. It's only MVC. So what that means is we can't support ASP.NET Core with our bootstrap controls until there is an MVC version. Will it be possible? It's too early to say, Joe. I think you should just wait and see. But what the story now that's available with these wrappers, or what we call them DevStream MVC controls now, these do support bootstrap and as i mentioned if you go to the js.devexpress.com website and you click on this theme builder you'll see that you can upload any less variables file now what that means is uh if you go to for example boot swatch and download the let's go to let's go to let's say solar and if you look at solar here and you click on this drop down you'll find this variable slot less file. Now if you save this file and upload it to this, uh, this uh, setting here, you'll see that all the controls will adapt. So what's nice is that the DevExtreme controls base theme already is compatible with the Bootstrap base theme. But if you want a different theme, you can just upload the less variables file and it adapts. And again, this story is also the same for the DevExtreme MVC uh, controls as well. All right, I think there isn't too many. If I've missed any, p 
please, please contact us. Now, a lot of what we're doing today is based on your feedback. So email me, uh, uh, let us know on Twitter. Even if you, if you like the stuff and just are like, hey, I'm super happy with it, let us know. It always makes the devs happy to know how customers are using this stuff. Makes me happy. I'm like, all right, people like this stuff. They're using it. What's your favorite feature is? Or again, if it's just something, things you'd like to see happen, let us know as well. Uh, we love to hear feedback. And uh, you know, with that, a lot of you have asked about questions uh, about sort of some client-side technologies. And uh, as Amanda mentioned, uh, we've got a webinar coming up later this week as well. And so uh, Julian and I, we're gonna talk about the client-side story. So come join us for that webinar and you'll see a lot more of the DevStream stuff. For now, my only request is uh, if you, the way you can get the 17.1 beta, right? The 17.4 release is coming and you'll know that just when you go to devexpress.com and it'll say, hey, 17.1 is available. You'll get an email from us. Don't worry, you will know when 17.1 is available. But if you are logged in, go log into devexpress.com and go to your download manager, you can find the uh, uh, beta for 17.1 uh, in your download manager. So uh, download 17.1 and then open up the demo center, play around with the bootstrap controls, play around with the new features for HP.net, as well as the Dev Extreme MVC controls will be available for you as well. Now, typically we put our, uh, our, we put our demos for uh, release under the C users public documents folder. And if you go to DevExtreme, you'll find the DevExtreme MVC controls. We've got samples for HP.NET Core and for standard MVC. So play around with all of these new controls. And again, we have webinars that cover them as well. All right, with that, uh, if you have other questions about specifically for support, about subscriptions, you know, we have uh, people to help you with that. With that, Amanda, let me hand it back over to you. Don, thank you very much. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Mahal. And like we mentioned uh, earlier, uh, today's webinar will also be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. I already posted that link in the chat box. And that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Mahul and Don. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.